Hello and welcome to part two. This one here is another typical um, problem. I call it the cupboard on the wall problem. It's very similar to farm gate problem. There's all sorts of things that, that, that are of this configuration. Um, lots of contexts, but they're all the same, you know, or very similar at least. So in this particular problem here, we have a cupboard which is screwed to the wall up here and resting on a little um, point down here. We're, we've got a weight of the cupboard which is 50 newtons um, and we're assuming the cupboard is empty and it's uniform and therefore the weight acts halfway along the cupboard. The cupboard is 30 centimetres in depth and 80 centimetres in height from the point of rest there and the point of um, attachment to the wall there. We're assuming this little distance in here and the distance above and below these, these fixings is negligible. Okay, so exactly the same thing. What we're asked to find here um, is the, um, the force that's going into the wall here. All right, so this, this frictional force here, F, where it's screwed into the wall, that's the one we're going to try and find. We can also find this one here, the reaction force from um, the wall. And actually, this force is not going to be uh, horizontal completely. There's also going to be a vertical component of this force. So we can have the frictional um, in the x direction, and we'll just call this Fy because the friction will act up, up at some angle here. Okay, so there's an extra one here that's not on the diagram. Okay, so there we go. So same thing. Uh, this time we will need three equations because we've got horizontal forces acting. So we're going to call this um, maybe W here for the weight of the cupboard. All right, so in the vertical direction, we have just two forces acting. So we have the Fy, the Y component of that frictional force, is going to be equal to W, all right, um, which we know to be 50 newtons. Okay, so that's nice and simple. In the horizontal direction, we have two forces acting again. We have Fx, the X component up here, acting into the wall, and the reaction from the wall at the bottom of the cupboard, R. That's that. And in the rotational direction, we're looking for the moment. So this is the more complicated one. So we need to choose a point to be the pivot. And the most sensible one to choose in this case is down here where R is acting. And therefore, the moment of R is zero. OK. Um, in addition to that, we're assuming this distance here is negligible. And so we can assume that the moment from Fy is also zero because the, the line, the force line from Fy acts pretty much through the pivot. So we're going to um, say that this distance here is negligible and therefore there's no moment from Fy either because the line of action of the force goes through the pivot and therefore there's no perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action of the force. So Fy produces no moment and R produces no moment, which means the only two moments are from Fx and from W. So we can say, right, let's have a look at, at putting those in boxes again. So we, can, we know that um, Fx is acting 80 centimeters from the pivot because there's your uh, perpendicular distance. So Fx and 80 are a pair for um, our moment and that acts in a clockwise direction. Similarly, we have W producing a moment, but W is acting at this distance from the pivot. And as we said, the cupboard is uniform. So we're assuming that that's half the depth of the cupboard. So we can say that that's 15 centimeters from there to there. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave the distances. Um, no, I'm going to convert them to meters. Let's just do the things the proper way around. So I'm going to convert these to meters. It doesn't actually matter if you do or not, because actually the, the distances are going to cancel out, because what we're going to end up with is this force. So as long as you keep them consistent, that's fine. But I'm going to convert them anyway. So this distance here, 15 centimeters, and W is another pair which produces another moment. So that pair there is the one that turns the cupboard um, clockwise. Sorry, this one up here, I got that wrong actually. That's This one's turning the cupboard um, anti-clockwise because that's the pivot there, it's pulling that way. All right, okay. So. Rotational, the sum of the clockwise, here's a clockwise moment, 
So 50, which is W, times 0 0.15, which is the distance um, that W is acting from the pivot, must be equal to Fx times 0 0.8. So Fx times 0 0.8 meters. Okay. So those are our three equations. Now we can see immediately that we know what Fy is because Fy is just 50 newtons. So this one's 50 newtons. Okay. Here we've got 50 times 0 0.15 is equal to Fx times 0 0.8. Uh, and when you do the arithmetic on that one, you find that Fx is actually 9.4 newtons. Okay. Um, and because Fx equals R, we also know that R itself is equal to 9.4 newtons. So you can see how we've used all three, one after the other. We've used the vertical one first, because it's easy. There are only two vertical forces acti acting, so they must be equal. We've then used the rotational one to find Fx, which is 9.4 newtons. And then we've used the horizontal one to find R, because there are only two horizontal forces acting, and therefore they must be equal. So it's quite a nice example of one of these problems. Okay, so the third one we're going to do is what I call the pub sign problem. And this is probably the hardest of all because you've got a force acting at an angle. And when you've got a force acting at an angle, this is a situation where you have to um, resolve that force into its X and Y components. Okay, so let's have a look at that. All right, so let's call this, this force T for the tension. And down here we've got W for the weight and W B, we'll call it, for the weight of the bar. Let's call this WS for the weight of the sign. So this is the pub sign. This is the bar coming off the wall. This is the tension in the string. Now, I've actually got one force missing from here because this is the force at the hinge, which probably isn't um, sticking straight out from the wall. So we'll say there's an X component of that force and there's also a Y component of that force, HY. Okay, so we've got HX and HY. We've got tension acting at an angle, and then we've got WB and WS. So the first thing we need to do, let's have a look at our procedure again. Uh, identify the forces. Okay, we've done that. Resolve all forces into X and Y components. And so this is the difference with this question. So we need TY, which acts up this way, and TX, which acts along this way. All right, so T is made up of these two components, TX horizontally and TY vertically. So this is a much more complicated situation. So let's write down our three equations. Okay, vertically, we have the forces acting up, which is Ty and Hy. So the Y component of the hinge force and the Y component of the tension equal the downward acting forces, which are Ws and Wb. Ws is 200 newtons, Wb is 50 newtons. So that's going to be equal to 250 newtons. Okay, so we don't actually know either of these because we've got two unknowns. We can't actually use that to solve anything at present. Okay, let's have a look at the, so that's an H, not an A. An H, let's have a look at the horizontal forces. So horizontally, um, we only have two forces acting. So we have Tx, which is the leftward forces, the leftward force, that one here. And we have Hx, which is the X component of the hinge force, which is acting to the right. Okay, so Tx equals Hx. Okay, again, we don't know either of these, so we can't solve for that one. So let's have a look at the rotational aspect of this one. So we need to choose a pivot, and the best place to choose it is over here. Okay, why over there? because both of these forces act from the pivot uh, and therefore they don't have any moment either. And also this force Tx acts through the pivot. So the line of action is through the pivot and therefore the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot is zero and therefore the moment is zero too. So these three forces, Hy, Hx and Tx have no moment and therefore they don't appear in the rotational equilibrium equation which leaves just 
WB, WS, and TY. So the upward acting, sorry, so the, um, let's identify the moments first. So we've got this force here, 200, which is acting in a moment of, which is acting at a distance of two meters from the pivot, that distance there times that force there. So that's a clockwise moment. So we're going to have 200 times two. Okay, so that's one of our clockwise moments. There's another one here, this 50 Newton force. And if we assume the bar is uniform, then that's going to act from the center of the bar, which is one meter from the pivot. So 50 times one meter is our other uh, clockwise moment, 50 times one. And I know that's a very simple sum, but I'm gonna write it out in full so that you can follow what I'm doing. Those must be equal to the anti-clockwise moments. Okay, so the only, other, the only other moment is provided by Ty, which is acting anti-clockwise. And that also is acting two meters from the bar. So the force times the distance here is Ty times two. Okay, so you can see hopefully that the only equation with um, two, uh, with, with one unknown is this rotational one. So we need to use the rotational equation in order to find ty and that's the first thing we can find. Okay, so 2ty is equal to 200 times 2 plus 50 times 1 and when you rearrange that and do the arithmetic you find that ty is actually equal to 225 newtons. Okay, 225 newtons which is ty. So that one there is 225. Okay, so once we've got ty um, we can actually m use um, trigonometry to find t. So if you think back to your vectors, then the, this, is, this is acting with the x-axis, this angle of 30 degrees. So the, the y component will be equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. So we're saying that ty is equal to t sine 30. Okay, so 225 is equal to T times sine 30. So the tension in the strip in the um, wire, the actual tension is going to be equal to Ty divided by sine 30. So T is equal to Ty, which is 225 divided by sine 30. And when you do that, because sine 30 is a half, you end up with T being 400 and 50 newtons. All right, so the tension in the string here is 450 newtons. And we've used the rotational equation to do that. Okay, so now we know what Ty is, we can actually work out Hy, because Ty is 225, 225 plus 25 is equal to 250. So we can now immediately write down that Hy, so the vertical component of the hinge force, is equal to 25 newtons. Okay, 25 newtons. And that's from this vertical equation. Um, and then we can go further and we can actually calculate Tx um, by using uh, Sokotoa again to calculate Tx. And when we've got Tx, that's equal to Hx. So we can carry on through this method and we can find Tx and Hx. So Tx, let's just do that here. Tx is actually equal to T, which we now know, times the cosine of 30. Okay, so 450 times the cosine of 30 gives us approximately 390 newtons. So both Tx pointing this way and Hx pointing this way are both equal to 390 newtons for the object to be in equilibrium. Okay, so that's how you solve equilibrium problems. And just to recap, here's your procedure. Identify all the forces, resolve them into their components if necessary, choose a point to be the pivot, write down your vertical, horizontal and rotational equations and use them to find your unknown quantities one after the other. From that, you can do pretty much any equilibrium problem that you will encounter at AS.